Welcome! Map number one in our third best of three of the day here in the Banshee Cup qualifier number one. Number two, excuse me, we're in day number one. My name is Bahamut. On the left-hand side, we have Bathrobe and Bratwurst versus Vinland Raiders. We are in the upper bracket semifinals. This is the first of two of these, and then we'll get into the upper bracket finals. All games today are best threes. All games in this tournament are the Meta Madness style of draft, which means... Heroes that are picked and played are unavailable for future maps in this best of three. All heroes are available as there are no tournament bans. Heroes that are banned at the top of the screen do not add to the list. Only heroes that are picked and played. So there will be 10 bans going into map number two. 20 bans going into map number three if we make it there. I have not seen the members of Vinland Raiders today, so we'll see how they do. Uh, looks like their normal team. Yeah, I do believe this is their normal roster. Uh, so we get a Maev Lucio ban. Of course, if you're watching over here on Twitch, be sure to follow the stream. If you're enjoying the stream, be sure to drop the follow, drop a follow. And if you'd like to support the stream further, it's always much appreciated. We do stream six days a week. I average around six hours per stream. We do a lot of fun content here. Here's the storm. <clears throat> is at the core of our content, but we will be also doing some RTS stuff coming up in the future. We'll be doing some Stormgate stuff for sure. We'll be doing some Zero Space stuff in the future. We've got some fun streams as well, like we do our uh, Suffering Fridays. We've got painting streams, cooking streams. We've done a we've done we've done two Yule Log streams in February. We have a uh, subathon coming up to celebrate three years of full-time streaming. Last but not least, if you're over on the YouTube page, be sure to like and subscribe. As we can grow the YouTube page a little bit further, if we hit a thousand subs on that channel, we can monetize the channel, which means more food for Bandit. And if you're watching over on YouTube and you're wondering uh, if the VODs, why the VODs might be shorter than the length in the sense of there's no content after a certain amount, we add spoiler-free additional time as I do edit all these VODs to remove the downtime between games, as well as uh, adding in spoiler-free additional time. So all best of threes will be an hour and a half on YouTube. All best of fives will be two and a half hours, regardless of how many maps there are. So that way, you can't look at the timer and be like, ah, oh, 45 minutes, that's a 2-0. Anyways, Junkrat, first pick for the side of Vinland Raiders, as Alterac Pass was the map choice of Bathrobe and Bratwurst, who will start out with the Rhaegar and Nubarak. A Nubarak, this is, I would dare say one of his best maps because he also gets a ton of value around the objective phase being able to spawn beetles which will distract the jailers so Anubarak can solo the objective phase without having to kill the jailers and then get the channel. Junkrat has great delay around this with uh, Endless Nades level 16. He's got good poke potential. We'll see if there's any other poke based heroes to be grabbed. Looks like it will be Diablo Brightwing to initiate some, some wall, wall bangs and some polymorphs. Uh, what else can I mention for all of you, chat? You love trail mix, salted bark, mystery berries, ants on a stick. Ants on a stick is good, actually. Just fill the end of the video with Baja Dance. <laughs> I usually just use the Banshee Cup logo, but that's actually not a bad idea. Not a bad idea, Stark. Ah, thank you for the hydrate. Ah. All right, got our got our cup of black tea. 9, 10 in the morning. This, see, this is normally when I'm starting stream. I usually, I, I, I would have been just starting stream about 20 minutes ago if this was a, if this was a normal, if this was a normal day. But as I said, don't ever, don't let anyone ever tell you that I don't love this game because I will destroy my sleep schedule for casting and fun content. Tracer and Leoric, a very simple draft from the side of Bathrobe and Bratwurst. Probably a hyper carry Tracer. No, well, this is a map that lends really well to the to the solo lane sandwich, where you put like a soloer on top, a soloer and bottom, and then you have your core three, your tank, assassin, and healer in mid lane. The healer and the assassin can rotate out for the null camp, and the tank can sit there and just slowly clear the wave. I do love this Samuro quite a bit. That's a nice Sven pickup. Excuse me, sorry. I love the Samuro pickup for him. 
Hanzo has really good poke. I was wondering if we'd see Hanzo in this. The front line of Vinland Raiders is feeling lacking, but their damage is really, really good. So if you just win the fight very quickly, then you're good. Last pick, as I said, the solo lane sandwich is something I'd like to see. It's going to be a Kael'thas instead, which I'm still fine with this as well. I'm still absolutely fine with this. Kael'thas can be left alone in a lane. Uh, he can get some fine clear. He can play it so slow and safe. Uh, it's a good draft from both sides. It's a good draft from both sides. I'm excited to see how uh, map number one will unfold. Alrighty, chat. Okay, so we're loading on in. The gamble will start a few moments after we introduce the teams. Get your gambles ready, and uh, here we go. I'm trying to think. I don't know if I've had salted bark in a long time. My... My aunt made it all the time during Christmas, but I don't live in Michigan anymore, so I don't I don't see her for Christmas. So we don't get I don't I don't and I also like I'd, I'd usually eat a couple pieces then give it give the rest to my mom because she was a fan of it. Left hand side of Alterac Pass map number one in this best three series, we've got Bathrobe and Bratwurst, Hazuab's Leoric, Dino Tracer, Death Knight, Rhaegar, Masquerade, and Ubarak, and last but not least, Ultralist to play Kael'thas. East. Ham side of the map, we've got Vinland Raiders. Hunter Orc will be your Brightwing. Nano Junkrat, Holpaka Hanzo, twice on Diablo, and Sven will be your Samuro. So as I said, we'll start up our prediction here in just a moment. Get your gambles ready as Hanzo picks up one stack on his simple geometry. It is Way of Illusion. This is a typical build for Sven. Beetle start for a Nubrak makes sense. We have the, ca the, the excuse me, the consumed vitality. So I thought it was ghastly reach. Tracer's parting gift. Kael'thas's globes. Okay, all right. Well, let's get the gamble in, everybody. Start prediction. Which team's gonna win? Map number one. Convection or riot? Well, time to riot. It's Mana Addict. Time to riot. Nubrak burrows in, lands the double stun. Polymorph by Brightwing, overpowered by Diablo. Concussion Mine into the fort front gate. Masquerade getting a little low. And that is going to be... Stream Deck, you have one job today. First to the side of Vinland Raiders. And Samuro is going to try and get some stackage off of Hazuobs in this mid lane. And does manage to pick up eight stacks currently. Taking a leak, taking a leak, taking a look back down in bottom lane. Tracer blinks in, parting gift. Uh, don't, don't the grenades do something? Uh, six deal damage. Heroes hit with these bombs are slowed by 50% and grant 7% pulse bomb charge. That's what it was. Play the odds. Holy crap, there's 100k on Vinland Raiders. A hundred thousand channel points. Best of luck. Best of luck to the Vinland Raider believer. Not judging you by any means. I'm just saying, holy crap, that is a confident bet. Or that's just confidence in your amount of channel points you have. Polymorph to answer Dino's pressure. As Holpaka continues to try and get some... Scatter stacks currently on six. Gravity laps onto two. Soothing miss activated by Brightwing. No critical miss level seven yet. Does have the magic spit level four. It is paralyzing rage for Leoric. He'll have the 60% slow off the skeletal swing. Bed of barbs on a Nubrak, which is actually really, really good talent because it, it stays, it persists on the ground for 3.5 seconds. So that means you can delay out the objective for 3.5 more seconds against the enemy. All right, it is 10,700 to 100,000. Oh, Paka, I can't believe you lived right there. Gets the scatter off the wall. Went into ignore all distractions for the extra range. You also get the minion insta-kill. Six to six in our levels. Camp on the left to be grabbed. 
Nothing uh, siege camp over here. Nothing siege camp wise over there. Actually, Junkrat's making the rotation for it. Yeah, he is. Gonna check initially with one of the frag launcher grenades just to see if the enemy was on that, since there haven't been many enemies showing on mini map outside of Hazuobs and top lane and Dino as well. Newbrack delayed out once by Junkrat. As I mentioned, this is what I was talking about in draft. The Beatles summoned here. Delay things out a little bit. Excuse me, delay out the Jailers. Brightwing gets another delay with an Arcane Flare. Overpower onto Death Knight in the mid lane. Hanzo gets another delay with a Sonic Arrow. Concussion Mine now being set up, and Masquerade has got to be a little frustrating with all this poke around. And yeah, there's, there's the Scatter from Opaka picking up the 13th stack on, on Simple Geometry. Went into Never Outmatch, so the Scatter Reduction. No damage increase off the scatter onto uh, minions and mercenaries. Minions, mercenaries, and monsters, I think it is, actually. The triple M. You're all in? I know you are, Kalos. You're one of the few people that always go all in. Actually, it's not true. Stark always goes all in. Stark is truly an all-inner. An al -inner. Masquerade doing his best to wiggle his way out of this, and he will be able to do so. Twice gonna try the channel here. Jailers will delay, but you also have a new Barak around. Shadow Charge into the wall, overpower, concussion mine, splits Masquerade, but now he's right next to Junkrat, who there's a pulse bomb from Tracer, holy crap. Call an ambulance, but not for me! Tracer gets the double kill with the fadeaway... Recall, Bomb Parting Gift, level one. Samuro and Hanzo finish out almost simultaneously on their level ones. Alan, yeah, Alan. As I said, every time I see your StarCraft II name, I always, I always, I know it's not Alan, but I always see Alan. <laughs> oh, the Sonic Arrow didn't get the delay? Wow, I'm actually kind of surprised by that. I go in as well. Maybe that's why I never had those huge amounts of channel points. I'm not a smart man. I think you are a smart man because you go all in. And you're not afraid of losing all your channel points. Nice snipe from Hanzo. Takes down Tracer. Hopako wants more, though. Delay on the objective by Hunter Orc on the bottom right of our screen. Death Knight. Hold on, Death Knight. Sven does not have enough damage in the Junkrat frag launcher grenades. Will not be able to sneak. Oh my god, a Dragon Zero to the face. Rhaegar goes down, Hazuobs will be sliced up by the Blade Master, and Nano gets the channel on the objective. We're living on the edge. Living on the edge! Masquerade putting the herd onto Nano here, forced to burrow away. 10 seconds delayed out here by Ultralist. Diablo Fire Stomp does not get the interrupt on to Ultralist. So it's gonna be 8.6 remaining on the blue side, 10 seconds on the red side. Also good to see you, Susborn. Hope you're having a great day, bud. Hope you're all having a fantastic day, enjoying the games, enjoying the stream. Appreciate you all being here. I know there's a lot of places you can be, so thanks for being in my channel. Hell, you could be watching GDQ. Which, speaking of, it was awesome. I got to hear Covert Muffin a bit this morning, which was... He's such, he's such a good host, man. Always enjoy Covert Muffin. He's just such a good personality, no matter what time of the day it is. Fire Stomp out from Diablo. Cocoon onto him. Newbrack goes in for the Burrow. Dragon Zero will land, creating a little bit of space for twice. Hunter Orc blinks in, blinks out, gets hit with a living bomb, but Diablo will be safe for the time being. He's gonna look for a channel on this, but the Jailers are still around. Looks like Diablo tries to pull those away. Oh, living bomb spread. Hopaka gonna sp not spread that, actually. Brightwing got the blink heal away. Polymorph on the Masquerade, but twice is so low on this. Diablo, souls expended, and Spen will be bopped by the Pulse Bomb of Tracer. Dino now looking for more revenge from earlier. Concussion Mine should get a delay onto a Nubarak here. But I think, well, there should be a little bit more delay. Junkrat should have some frag launcher grenades over the wall. Brightwing as well has delay. Mid lane does have a camp pushing in with a decent wave. And Azuab's a little bit low. Twice and hope. Wait, hold on. Twice has got the angle. But Hanzo misses some very important abilities. Hazuobs will go down to the lightning breath. 
And now twice gets the dieback. The Orc is traded. Hunter Orc has no blink target. Actually gets to Nano in time, but still will go. No way! 89 HP! Death Knight going in for the bite on the butt and will be eating good tonight. But Hanzo has scattered his way through the Shaman. And Rhaegar does go down. Parting Gift does not get the kill onto Junkrat. What's up, Turbo? How you doing, bud? Who? That is, that is, yeah. Oh, wow. That's kind of ironic because you died. <laughs> kind of ironic. Oh, that's good. That's good. I love that right there. That was very good. Arrows hurt more than bites, and there is no rebuttal, huh? I know he's on a camp and stuff, but I'm just saying. Just throwing shots back at him. We didn't really talk about Tensei. I'm just skimming through them. We do have a way of illusion for Samuro. He's not going to go Bladestorm. Sven does go Bladestorm from time to time for the wave clear, but I think on this on a map of this scale, I think he wants that that micro ability. Pulse bomb, sticky bomb gets a slow. That's about it. This is, by the way, excuse me. This is the first objective still. Neither team has landed a first objective, but I think there is going to be a connection on to Hanzo. He's going to be polymorphed. Excuse me, he's going to be cocooned. Hunter Orc is still alive. Nope. Tracer's able to close that distance, get the kill. Hanzo gets a counter kill into a Nubrak with a nice scatter. Dragon's Arrow, agility. Tracer gets the recall, and she'll trade into Hanzo. Overwatch for Overwatch. And now Death Knight's doing his best to back away. Concussion Mine will not be activated in time. Chattering Teeth chasing onto Death Knight, but he's able to avoid these. Nano, so very low, does go down. Ultralisk is going to activate the Arcane Barrier. Here comes Leoric with an Entomb. Sven trying to chase it onto Ultralisk. Can't sustain the chase with the Gravity Lapse that did connect into him. And phase shift from Brightwing. Hazuops has got to get out of here. Sven Sakuchi's further into the fight, but... Azuabs is able to disengage, and now twice goes for the channel, gets it. Eight seconds left. Overpower! Nicely done from twice. Lands the combo into Hazuabs, and he will be picked off. Phoenix thrown out by Kael'thas. That zones the enemy, but the objective phase is over. Uh, what's the Diablo souls? 89 souls currently. He'll get almost enough off of mid lane. And you might get a few off of a fire stomp later on. Bottom lane being pushed out immediately by the four members available. Leoric is... Where is Leoric? There you are. Leoric's about to respawn. Pulse bomb onto Hunter Orc who blinks away. Gravity laps onto both of them. Beautiful Entomb! The Concussion Mine saves Leoric. He wants the kill, but he can't close the distance onto Junkrat. Diablo shadow charges Leoric into the steel trap of Junkrat. Riptire activated as well. Lightning Breath coming out. Looking for the bop back into the Lightning Breath, but can't land it. Meanwhile, in mid lane, Samuro, Sven. He's doing Samuro things, as we like to say. Samuro doing Samuro things. 18 stacks on the Mithril Mace for Leoric. Hazuobs. We also will see the Ignite for Ultralisk. We've got Epicenter for a new Barak. Top lane got pushed in a little bit. So the Keep Front Gates take some damage here. Bottom lane Fort still very healthy. The fight may be breaking out once again. A new Barak tries to burrow away. Spends right there. Gets a couple autos in. Some scatters from Hanzo as he did go Giant Slayer level 16. Press the attack for our Samuro. We've got the full Fire Stomp build from Diablo with the debilitating flings at 16. Critter Eyes from Junkrat. Uh, excuse me, from Brightwing. Junkrat has the Endless Nades. That was actually something I mentioned in the draft. This is a fantastic map for Endless Nades because you, well, if you keep poking at the enemy team. Hold on, what, what is the cooldown overall? Uh, Charge cooldown, 12 seconds. You get 1.5 seconds off of each nade. Okay. So it's not like 100% uh, Endless, but you can get some decent cooldown. Decent cooldown, and depending on how you, you space out your nades, that it could actually be endless in a sense. 
All right, Boston top, Boston bottom to be traded between both teams. 10 to 9 in kills, 19 to 18 in our levels, favoring Bathrobe and Bratwurst in the blue. Buh, 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 buh. Boston top lane, how is our jungle grave golem defender doing here? Jungle grave golem laner, excuse me, said it wrong. How are we doing? 705 into structures, not too bad. Samuro's gonna start clearing things out in bottom. Meanwhile, the objective has not been announced yet, but we do know the location as it does swap between top and bottom. The next objective timer will be 40 seconds of uh, active control. And the keep front gate goes down. Keep front, oh wow, it's like very similar. Except this tower took a little bit more damage. That's about it. Eh. Wowee, chat. Wowee. Uh, half a level to go for 20 talents here. Hazuobs and Ultra Whisk are making quick work of the wave in top. Samura still clearing things out in bottom lane. Null pack is grabbed over here. They're just trying to clear this out safely. Junkrat will finish this out. And uh, Nubrak is delayed once. Hazuobs forced to back away. Masquerade is not delayed this time. 20 talents here, still not here just yet, but you still, as I mentioned, 40 seconds of channel time is needed. It's not like Brax's holdout where you channel a bit and you still get some Zerg wave. It's, you gotta channel the whole thing. So they're gonna give this for a moment. Wait for the 20 talents here on Vinland Raiders. They've got 20 seconds to, to really start pushing in or uh, answering, if you will. Diablo, he's gonna try and get this delayed out once. There's the Phoenix from Kael'thas. I do believe they're not, oh, that's a great Entomb from Leoric with the Buried Alive, but so much health on Diablo. Dragon's Arrow will connect. The defense ping around the objective. No 20 talents here. Masquerade is gonna get the Ancestor healing with the Farseer's Blessing. The objective phase will be achieved by Bathrobe and Bratwurst. Samuro inside the cocoon. Polymorph into Hazuobs, who's trying his best to back away, but does go down. Opaka slowed by the Earth Grasp Totem, but hold the phone, hold the phone! Natural agility in, and Kael'thas does go down. Scatter off the wall into Masquerade, gets a chunk of damage into him, but that's about it. Okay. So extra oomph for Junkrat was chosen after he already used the Rip Tire, so he didn't get any cooldown reduction from hitting the enemies with that. Objective phase is going to find minimal to no value. Masquerade and friends, they want to try and get a gank on Nano or Sven here, but it's not going to work out. Diablo with the Invisible Friends from Brightwing is here as well. Bottom lane is going to be left by Hanzo. So they might lose a bit of damage onto that keep. I don't think they'll lose the keep. Diablo goes in with the Shadow Charge onto Tracer. Hanzo, Dragon's Arrow is huge! Absolutely massive from Hanzo right there. Has the two second stun from the max range. Bullseye to follow up. Masquerade goes down. But here's the issue, chat. It's it's uh, Alterac Pass. On average, you need two keeps down to end a game. Now, if one keep goes down, well, actually, speaking of one keep going down, I said they wouldn't lose that. They did for sure. If one keep goes down and like two more kills are found, maybe Vinland Raiders can end. But I I expect this. I don't even. They might even get. Might not even get the. Might not even get the keep here. Hellgate answered with an entomb from Leoric. The ancestral healing Farseer's blessings not enough. Diablo will go down. Souls expended. Mithril Mist finished out by our Leoric. And yeah, I don't think they're going to end here. They've got a humongous wave in mid. Samuro mirror images will tank a couple tower shots as the minion wave does arrive here. Drek'thar cleared out bottom. Vandar Stormpike dealing with the top lane right now. Dragon's arrow goes wide. Tracer blinks in. Oh my god, what happened, Dino? What happened, Dino? Must have been a polymorph from Brightwing or something, but that was beautifully done. They answer the, the Tracer deep dive with a kill. Minion wave is still pretty healthy here. Two keeps are down. Death timer on Kael'thas is 17 seconds. 
and Vandar Stormpike is looking like he's getting a little bit low. He's gonna try and spin to win here. Cocoon onto Hanzo, Masquerade burrows in. He does have rewind level 20, and Tomb from Leoric just catches the Diablo. Meanwhile, Death Knight jumps in with a bite on the butt. Polymorph onto a new Barag. We have a Riptire from Junkrat, point blank, gets the full reset. Gatling Gun, Rip Tires, end game number one here, and Vinland Raiders coming out on top. Welcome back into the Banshee Cup semi bracket, semi final bracket, upper bracket. I can't talk. Uh, upper bracket semi finals, first of the two of those, and then we have the upper bracket finals. So we still have uh, two more best of threes after this one. We're in the Meta Madness style of draft for this tournament. So here's the depicting player unavailable for each maps. Blah, blah, blah. You already all know all that good stuff. I already explained it. If you don't, then um, I guess rewind the VOD. Lucio banned away for Battlefield of Eternity. Will the teams go for the number one, the number one character, Artanis on this map? Will Artanis be grabbed as the Immortal Burner? What's up, Tessa? Good to see you. Best of luck to your to your team today. Okay, sorry. I thought I thought that was enabled. I was just double checking the. I thought follower mode was like turned on or something like that. Anyways, um, I have Hogger, Blaze, Lucio. All right, what's our first pick from the side of Bathrobe and Bratwurst? Vinland Raiders did take map number one. Loser of this series goes down to the lower bracket for tomorrow. And winner will continue to the. Upper bracket finals uh, later today. I know, right, Chad Tannis? I know. Like, why? Why would you not go for Artanis? Do you not want to win the video game? That's better. I feel like if you just pick Artanis, you win instantly. At like in instantaneously, you're gonna win the game. No, I wonder though. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. What are we gonna be looking for here on this map? Vinland Raiders, how do they want to, how do they want to take, where do they want to take this? Chromie Muradin, okay. Sledgehammer level four is really good for a map like this. Sledgehammer is great if you want to go into, uh, 300% Stormbolt damage. You also get a 1.25 cooldown instead of the one second cooldown, uh, per auto attack. So it's a more post-level 10 value. Uther Varian as the answer. Now, is this a main healer Uther, or are we going to see double support? That's the real question. Double support or what? Does anyone know how many peeps are playing this game? <laughs> Dude, the, the YouTube comments on the patch notes are ridiculous. The YouTube comments on the patch notes are just like, oh my god. Wow. I, sh I need to put out more patch note videos, apparently. Uh, Alright, so Genji, Andu, and Band away. We're in our second draft phase. Double support, ah, uh, variant. Yeah, I'd actually like to see Colossal Smash. Colossal Smash does apply. Colossal Smash does apply to the uh, Immortals, if you did not know. If you Colossal Smash them, you do reduce their armor by 20. So, 
I actually think that it's like a super un... I feel like Colossal Smash is just so underrated. Like, yeah, I understand point and click taunt every 16 seconds. I understand that. I get it. But Colossal Smash goes, ah! Dude, honestly, I feel like if you do go Colossal Smash in this game, you win. Like, with the with the burst ability and the sustained damage between Sylvanas and, and Li Ming, uh, yeah, like, Colossal, like, you have the stun from Uther. Granted, if you go into Taunt, I mean, it's just as powerful. You go, you have a stun from Uther into a variant Taunt, and they're relatively low cooldowns. White Mane's got Intercession, Chromie's got Timeout, Seraphim, Hand of Freedom... And Lunara, probably for Abolish Magic. And she also has Nature's Culling, which is increased damage to non-heroic targets. So, yeah. Uh, this is a pretty good draft. This is a pretty good draft from both sides. I really don't know who's going to take this. Like Tyrande's trait? Yes. Oh, God, Susborn. I swallowed two strings and they came out, uh, excuse me, when they came out, they were tied together. I shit you not. Yeah! All right, let's, uh, we'll write up the prediction. We'll start things up. We'll start the prediction up after we introduce the teams. Welcome into map number two in our third best of three of the day. We have got Nano Chromie for the side of Finland Raiders. Sven Urel, Hopaka, Lunara, twice on Muradin, and Hunter Orc will be your Sally Whitemane. Or Sally Thymane, however you want to call her. West Ham side of the map, we got Bathrobe and Bratwurst. Hazuobs on the Dino Dahaka. We're looking at a Masquerade Varian. Lion's Maw level one, that's gonna be Taunt. Dino Sylvanas, Death Knight Uther, and Ultralisk will be your Sylvanas? No, Li Ming, sorry. We wait a few moments here so y'all can see the level ones. We do have a delay on stream, so I do my best to kind of delay things out a little bit for the gamble. Yep, Sally Thymane. Stormbolt to the face of Ultralisk, who's gonna get giggle beamed by Hunter Orc, but the Inquisition's not enough to get a kill. No kill to be had. Start prediction! Which team is gonna win map number two in our third best of three of the day? Which team is going to win Battlefield of Eternity? Get your gambles in. You have a solid minute and a half from when you're hearing me say this to get your predictions in. I mean, someone did just put 100,000 on, on Vinland Raiders map number one. Let's see if the same energy is available. Sylvanas to Haka in the top lane. I'm going to be trying to pressure into Sven a little bit here, but Sven just plays it slow and safe in front of the fort front gate. While the enemy team... Oh, wait, hold on. Dahaka brush stalking. There's a timeout behind. Or a time trap started behind. Camp invaded. Hazuab's low. Meanwhile, Yorel is able to clear out the top lane unpressured by Dahaka. Which, by the way, Hazoobs will be going into Enhanced Agility Level 1. No tissue regeneration for him. Wave of Light for the Uther. No Believers on Bathrobe and, and Bratwurst. That is wild to me. Charge in from Varian, no level four. The other day, my son sent me a text uh, that he slipped and fell on ice while bringing up the trash cans from the corner. I asked if he was okay, and it said that his butt hurt, so I asked if he had put ice on it. <laughs> Level 1 for Chromie, deep breathing's already done. Possession, Sylvanas, level 4. Taunt from Varian, level 4. We got the Lurker Strain for Dahaka. We we'll also see the Pursuit of Justice from Uther. 
You're allowed to gamble last game, but Twitch won't let you again. Probably have to F5 your stream. If you hear about the gambles, but you don't see the gambles, then you should probably F5. Oh, Kel threw, Kel threw down again. Someone else threw down, though. We got 52,000 on Bathrobe and Bratwurst as we have a drag, stun, and Urel is fine. Because it's Urel, chat. Lost some swell level four for Lunara. Masquerade trying to wiggle his way out of that damage. First objective phase still here. Lunara poking onto the objective, but decides to join the allies. Hey, what's up, Skullfee? How you doing today, bud? Happy Saturday to you, my friend. Hope you're having a wonderful day. Lunara and Chromi work on this objective. Lunara is actually going to go into bottom lane because Dino is just free split soaking with the Black Arrows active and does get quite a bit of value down here. First half of the Immortal phase is in favor of Bathrobe and Bratwurst as Sylvanas will join into the Allied's crew to work or race this down. Rel jumps in. Halpaka and Nano on the right-hand side trying to race down against the enemy team, but I don't think you win this. All you're going to do is just get some shielding down. Hunter Orc is trying to back away from the Dahaka. Thought he was going to look for a drag, but it doesn't look like that'll be the case. Okay. Top lane objective to the side of Bathrobe and Bratwurst. Oh, then it's probably, then it's your browser, Kalos. Then it's probably your browser or your phone. To me, I march for Hell's Gates. I shall march for Hell's Gates. I shall march for Hell's Gates. I shall march for Hell's Gates. All right, Alarian, we get it. Haunting wave in from Dino. Nano's the target. The rotation from the allies comes through. And with Black Arrows active, this is looking like a really good immortal phase for the top lane on Bathrobe and Bratwurst. Drag into the spin. Urel is going to go down. The top four does fall. Murden has to dwarf toss out. He does have the heavy impact at level four, at level seven, excuse me. And uh, double double fort phase here. Black arrows are about to be off cooldown in three seconds. So, and Sylvanas is going to clear out the wave really quickly. I don't know what just happened. I have no idea what just happened. I have no idea how that happened, but it did. And Dahaka will be dead in top lane. You didn't miss much. Didn't miss much. Fort goes down in bottom. Looks like we're going to see a Fort Trade. No, this is, this is Fort Gate still up and available. Choking Pollen, by the way. Sorry, we had a little bandit break. Yeah. My bad. Little little bandit break. The Hawker Brush Talks in. Ultralisk gets one reset. Twice as the new target. Oh, wow. We have a bit of a... So Nano's getting chased up over there. Down over here twice is... Gonna land the storm bolt. Lee Ming, you got a reset? You got an arcane orb? You got something? Nope. Nano's gonna live in top lane. Unless unless Ultralis gets an arcane orb over the wall! Oh, 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 oh. All right, let's cycle through the other numbers, get an idea of what the damage healing experience looks like between these two teams. Chromie's already picked up her temporal loop. We've got, uh, I did not look at Varian's level 10. I think he went into shield wall, if I'm not mistaken. Wave of Force, Li Ming, Isolation to Haka, Divine Shield, Uther, and Wailing Arrow, Sylvanas. As Urel picks up the last little bit of experience needed. Immortals are on defensive position sides. Murden has his piercing Stormbolt now. Lunara trying to chase on a Masquerade. Urel, Righteous Hammer, or excuse me. The Avenging Wrath was channeled right there. Divine Steed instantly. Meanwhile, down in bottom, Lunara was chasing out a little bit, but there's a decent wave that needs to be cleared out. Sven is going to make quick work of that. 
top lane. Dahak is going to manage this wave as well. So solo laners off to solo lane duties, though. Muradin looks for a Stormbolt and a Masquerade. Can't land it. Masquerade charges in. Uh, how did he know Chromie was there? I believe... So if you actually go back into the VOD... Savannah's had her trait mark on the three heroes over there, so I think they had vision from Sylvanas's, uh three stacks. Because, like, if I hover on Sylvanas, you can see that, like, see how murden has got the three little stacks? Chromie had the three stacks as well when she started hearthing, so I think vision was provided via that. Li Ming does go down to the Lunara damage over time, as it's a Yorel Muradin kill for Li Ming. Dahaka, meanwhile, is racing down the Immortal. But yeah, if, you, if you're talking about the, the, the reset Chromie here with the arcane over the wall, I believe that is vision because of the Sylvanas. If you are legitimately wondering. I don't know if that was a, a yoke or not. Dahaka leaves the objective before it goes to the halfway point. Meanders his way to top lane. He's got three stacks on his enhanced agility, so he's not moving that quickly. He's moving at 126%. So still slower than mount speed by 4%. But you still have that movement augment for five over three seconds. Over two? Over two seconds. Er... Is it baseline five or three? I always forget. It's baseline two. And it adds... Oh, wait. Drag onto White Man immediately from Azuabs. Beautifully done. Reset being looked for for Ultralisk here. But has to be careful of that Lunara damage. Okay. So the halfway mark of the Immortal will be achieved to Bathrobe and Bratwurst, and I think this is going to be another ob objective to them, yeah. Death Knight... Oh, wait, hold on, top lane? Death Knight can't get to Dino quickly enough. Hazuobs will brush stock, but it's going to be late as well. But during all of that, Li Ming is still working on the objective, and this is going to be a very healthy immortal to the side of Rathrobe and Browers. I don't see how Vinland Raiders can turn this around. Maybe they can get some kills, though. Leaping Strike on a Masquerade. Hazuobs is trying to get his get himself out of here. Another Leaping Strike on a Masquerade. He charges over to an enemy. Did go Shield Wall at level 10. Gets the Divine Shield from Uther. A little haunt. Okay. And Cleanse from Uther, I believe, doesn't pull him back. Meanwhile, Alarian in the top lane is going to be knocking on a keep front gate. Dealing 690 standard damage, 1,380 damage into structures. Immortal shielding will fall. Moving into melee mode. Jarel jumps in, forces Li Ming to blink back. Murden Dwarf launches into the enemy team. Actually, doesn't even have that talent yet, but he pops the Avatar. They're going to let the Immortal be cleared out by the Keep and look for a team fight. White Mane, bit of Giggle Beam from her. But the Clemency, the Inquisition are not going to set up any sort of kills here. Twice is just tanking some damage and immediately will be hit with a Todd from Masquerade. Whoa, a Dino is reset. Somehow, Dino's still alive. Uh, okay, Dino finally does get picked off right there. 34 seconds on that death timer. Masquerade, excuse me, Hopaka and Sven looking to chase onto Death Knight. A lot of good body blocking to keep Death Knight inside those uh, Sand Blasts from Chromie. Hopaka says, you know what, Death Knight, you're probably dead to damage over time. Unfortunately, it's Uther. He throws a wave of light and he's fine. Tahaka lands a drag onto Murid in here. Hunter Orc getting a little bit low, but Ultralisk is, is, is as well. Silence onto twice with the isolation. And I really did think that Vinland Raiders would come out on top with more than that, but now twice is looking for something here. There's a blink over the wall, misses the storm bolt, has to dwarf toss away. The ally team is nowhere to be found, and not too sure about what was going on there, but Murden does go down, and that was that was a that was some momentum that was fleeting to the side of Vinland Raiders and well, the Immortal phase is about to be ready again. Alright. 
Impalers in top lane. 7 to 4 in those kills. Level 16 almost here. Faster to the side of Bathrub and Bratwurst. I fight for the glory of the high heavens. Finds another player in fog. Hmm. I mean, I... Don't know actually why she blinked over the wall. Oh no, because they were they were going for the camp, I think. I think Li Ming was blinking over the wall to go for the camp so she wouldn't be walking through here. Maybe throw magic missiles like in at that ain't I don't know. Or we could just lie and say they're map hacking. <clears throat> I doubt it. Finds another player in the butt. Hmm. Okay. Masquerade. Bopped around, temporal loop, everything and the kitchen sink is thrown at Masquerade right now and his health bar is barely moving. Stormbolt from Muradin as they break off and no 16 talents here to the right hand side for Vinland Raiders. That time I, I think he saw Muradin retreat that way. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. All right, third immortal of the game goes over to the side of Bathrobe and Bratwurst. This goes into bottom lane, dealing a whole heck load of damage. We'll see a camp grab quickly on the left-hand side of our screen. 774 standard damage, 1,548 into structures. But the 16 talent here is here. Uh, we'll see the lash out and the harsh discipline. Harsh discipline from White Main, but uh, this Immortal's got a lot of shielding. Yurel with the Avenging Wrath ready. There's a time trap next to Dino. Not gonna be activated. It's actually activated onto the Dahaka. Now Yurel is going to self-cleanse, I do believe there. It might have gotten a cleanse from the intercession of White Main. Not 100% sure on that one. Yurel jumps in. The Immortal moves into melee mode. Dino activates the Black Arrows. Twice activates his Avatar and Dahaka Isolation is thrown out. Top lane, bottom lane keep does go down. Murden trying to get out of here. He's gonna throw a Stormbolt back. White Mane pops the Scarlet Aegis. We also will be seeing a um, Ardent Defender from White, uh, from Urel activated. The Immortal will get some shielding and some percent off the core, but it's not gonna be game end here. Leaping Strike in, Stormbolt to follow up. Masquerade's gonna be really taking a lot of damage this time. Wailing Arrow from Sylvanas is the answer. Yurel jumps in, stunned out immediately by Uther, trying to back away, does not have anything to heal up. Murden goes down, it's Reset City for Li Ming, and ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a map number two over to the side of Bathrobe and Bratwurst. They push into core 16 minutes in. And uh, Vinland Raiders fall here on map number two. GG well played to Bathrobe and Bratwurst. Big points indeed. Big points indeed. Holy crap. Holy crap. That was amazing. Thank you so very much for that. I, I literally walk back and I look at my monitor and I'm like, oh. Oh, there's a dance party happening in Twitch chat. Um, thank you so very, very much. I appreciate that greatly. What's up, Bear? How you doing, bud? Good morning as well, Harson. Thank you. Thank you seriously so very much for that. That is insanely generous. You are all, you've all been so generous to me this week and, and always. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, so very much for the, for the support and the, 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 just the generous. Thank you. Seriously. Thank you, everybody. You came to stream at the perfect time. You arrived. What do they say? What is it? What, what is it? The a wizard arrives uh, exactly when he needs to. What's the quote exactly? I forget the quote. 
Oh, st uh, Crush was trying to do a pyramid. It got broken by Tessa, but he still got it the second time round. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. All right, uh, map number three. You know the dealio. Meta Madness style of draft. Heroes, uh, 20 heroes are away. We're going to Infernal Shrines. Uh, let's see what we got going on for map number three. This is the upper bracket semifinal. We have another upper bracket semifinal after this, and then we have the upper bracket final. So winner of this still has to play one more map, but if you win the upper bracket final, all you have to do tomorrow is play one best of five. A wizard arrives precisely when he means to. Thank you. I was like, I was like, I know this quote, but I, a wizard is never late. He arrives precisely when he means to. A wizard is never late, nor is he early. He arrives precisely when he means to. I love that I got three slightly different variations. That is a perfect example of Twitch chat in a nutshell. Jahana and Anduin will be picked up here on the left-hand side. Last night we had an impromptu, uh, last night we had an impromptu, what's it called? Movie night, we watched Wrongfully Accused. God, that movie just, that movie's so good because as I said before, like, it's just like top secret. Like, once the jokes start, the jokes don't stop. They just, they just keep railing the jokes and it's so good. Blaze Genji, Sergeant Hammer. Okay, so maybe ban out a healer that would be good for the hammer. Maybe ban out Abathur, actually? Maybe ban out Abathur? Genji Abathur would be really annoying to deal with. The last part is the most important part, though. That is true. Crush nailed it. Perfect. Material band away. Makes sense, actually. Sorry. Sanctification, stuff like that. I'm, I'm so tired. The, 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 the sleepiness is starting to hit me. Sleepiness is starting to hit me. We still have two more best of threes after this. Oh, we can do it. We can do it, chat. We can do it. We can do it. We just got to put our back into it. So a Johanna and Anduin for bathrobe and bratwurst. Uh, what do they want to do here for their draft? How do they want to get into the hammer? Greymane Sonia. They could run a they could run a Medivh if they wanted. Or realistically a Jaina. Jaina would not be bad, actually. Actually, uh, yeah, you know what? Some sort of mage with some range damage would be nice. I mean, you could even consider like a Nazebo. Bathrobe and Bratwurst could consider a Nazebo. You got this. Drink more tea. Drink a monster. Ugh, I don't want uh. Dude, I have never liked monster. I have never liked it. I remember one time I we got a uh, monster came to our campus at Detroit Mercy and we got like free monster energy cans. I remember I had studio that day. I drank this much. I drank like I could still see the fluid in there at the like through the top of it. I sipped on a monster for four hours. I didn't even finish it. I drank like as I said like maybe a few ounces. I still got hyper and crashed off of it. The only thing that I, uh, yo, it's an Artanis. The only thing that I'll drink energy drink wise is Red Bull. And I think I drink like one Red Bull a year. I think I drink like a Red Bull a year. Um, I don't know. T in monster. Jaina, Chromie, Nazebo would all be good, but Artanis is going to come through and swap them. Artanis is going to come through and swap things around. All right, let's write up a prediction here. Crank that soldier, boy. Yo! There's a playlist on Spotify that's like, it's like, uh... I love early 2000s hip hop or whatever, and oh my god, dude, it's just like every bit of music that is that was from well from 2000s. But I mean, just there's so much nostalgia hit with that. Left 
ham side of the map, we're going to be seeing Bathrobe and Bratwurst. We've got Hazuobs to play your Sonya, Death Knight, Anduin, Masquerade, Johanna, Dino, Artanis, and Ultralisk will be your gray main. Nice mount synergy with the, the Raven and the... Um, oh, what's the name of it? The, um, the guy who hunts the vampires. I forget his name. Van Helsing skin. Twice we'll play your blaze with the side of Vinland Raiders in this map number three. Hopaka Genji, Sven on Malthiel. Hunter Orc will be your old man making shapes, Decker Kane, and Nano is your Sergeant Hammer who is going to go into advanced artillery level one. We'll start at the prediction in just a moment here. Let the stream catch up so y'all can see the level one. See this in first engagement. Endurance Stimpak for the blaze level one. We don't see that very often. I feel like it's always adrenaline or new. It's, it's just always adrenaline, I feel. Maybe the purple one from, from time to time. But it looks like uh, there's nothing crazy. Sergeant Hammer actually gets some decent siege damage here on the left-hand side. We will see Artanis go into uh, reactive parry level 1. So no dings for him. Let's go ahead and, as I said, start that Twitch prediction. Map number 3 of the day. Which team is going to be winning? Infernal Shrines. Winner of this team, winner of this game... Goes on to the upper bracket final, which will be our third best of three, or excuse me, uh, our second best of three after this. So I was trying to find out the phrasing in my head, and I just, I'm tired. Neural is shield. Uh, I can let you know, actually, because there's really not a ton happening, so let's break the game. My timing was impeccable right there. Neural is activate 40 mana, basic ability cooldown to recharge 100% faster. Adrenaline is well over 80% HP, 25% bonus attack speed. There you go. Bro, I, I, that, that timing with the announcer was so good. First blood. First blood. We'll go over to the side of Finland Raiders. And they'll find uh, level four first as well. Neural is shield butt. Amazon brand energy drinks. Flavor choices are red or white. They ain't got no blue in there. I'm sorry. This I thought this was America. You're telling me that you make you made two flavors, red and white, not blue. How are you not gonna respect the flag with energy drinks? Ultralisk is uh, doing their best to back away here. Greymane getting poked down a little bit. The camp is not... Actually, it was it was released back to full. Couldn't tell you, Kalos. No idea, bud. First objective, Arcane Punisher top lane. Last time I had an energy drink, I was driving across the country. I ended up staying awake for 36 hours. I think that was my last energy drink for the rest of my life. Oof. I drank um, back in university when the five-hour energy came out. Well, not really came out, but it was it was getting way more popular. Nice jet propulsion into the enemy team. There's going to be a root, but is there a boot onto Ultralisk? No. Level 4 Siege Tactics for the Hammer. Pops that unstoppable right there. But I took a uh, 5 hour energy because I was working on a project for school. And uh, I remember I had the... I had... I wouldn't even call them nightmares. I had night terrors. I had like the worst dreams that like it was absolutely horrifying. So of course, me being the person that I am, I was like, for science! Two months later, I did the exact same thing again and the exact same result. So I can't have five hour energy because that that I just get nightmares. I get horrible, scary night terrors. Twelve pack of monster in two days. Oof. I mean, I don't judge. I look at look at my beer consumption, man. I don't. Ju I got nowhere to judge, man. I'm destroying my body just in a different way. And that's the truth. Like, just like I remember my like my ex girlfriend would be like, "I can't believe you can drink six beers," and it's just like I can't believe you can drink five Coca Colas, you know? Siege tactics activated right there. No, well, different for everybody. Let's 
Swap onto the hammer, who's able to get the boost away. Dino now trying to put the uh, put the pain on as Genji picks up a few shuriken stacks. Hazuobs is rotated down, misses the spear, and Holpak is able to wiggle around that. Ten talent tiers almost here. Let's cycle through the other numbers. At least beer has protein. <laughs> it also has sugar in it, though. It does have sugar in it. Like, if you, if you have beers the night before you go and get blood work done, you will have high levels of sugar in your blood work. Soto's peanut butter doesn't make it healthy to eat a whole tub. Wait, it's not healthy to eat a whole tub of peanut butter? I need to adjust my diet. Punisher going over to the side of uh, bathrobe and bratwurst. Ultralist looking to work his way out of this. Deckard bonking here and there. Last rites gets the stack. The objective being worked on by Hammer as she will hit the jump with the siege tactics. And it looks like Deckard reset for full mana. I mean, six rum and six cokes together is the best of both worlds. Well, oh, shit, yeah. She'd drink whiskey. She'd drink whiskey and then be mean. Uh, tablets have uh, been trying to convince people to drink red wine and eat chocolate every other day. People leave what they want. Yeah. Big stay a while and listen to answer into the blessed shield of the Johanna. That's going to be a light bomb as well. Masquerade's so very low. The Chastise going out as well. And Malfeel's the one to get picked off in the end of that. A little spray at the end right there. A little 2018 team liquid. I'll never forget going over to my buddy's dad's house when we were like... 18 or whatever and uh, Like we were grabbing like a video game system from his dad's house for like a sleepover Or I guess a land night because when you're 18 you don't have sleepovers, but either way uh, we, we, we pull up and his dad's out on the deck drinking and He just goes he's like yeah, just having a little bit of wine or a whole jug <laughs> And I remember being like, isn't that a lot? Because because like in, in America, you can buy something called Carl Rossi, and it comes in this gigantic jug. It's like a jug of wine. It's super duper cheap. We used to say like people would buy it and then drink like damn near the whole thing, at, and then you'd get Rossi. <laughs> but I remember being like, isn't it a glass a day? And he goes, bah, it's whatever you want it to be. <laughs> Oh man, that was that, like that. That just lives rent free in my brain. Jet propulsion into the face of Greymane while Halpaka swift strikes through. The Impaler camp in mid is pushing in. We've got a fallen shaman in top, and meanwhile, a bunker from Blaze has to be activated in this mid lane. It is cleared out. Leap in from Sonya. Light bomb as well. The stay wall and listen comes through, and Hazuobs is able to get the kill. Oh no, Hazuobs will go down. It's Dino gets the kill. A trade. Blaze for Sonya. Genji jumps in with the natural, or excuse me, the cybernetic agility. Some shurikens to the face. Shin Gun level 13 is picked up, so it does deal quite a bit of damage. Just one glass of wine. I didn't see how big the glass. Exactly. Pandemic times have me eating too much fast food. I drank too much beer during pandemic times. I drank way like. Like it's not I like I don't have it's like out of control, but I definitely I definitely drank a lot more because I mean like That was that was like what most people were doing <laughs> Two of those a day that is insane I got wine of uh, I got some of that wine back in the day yeah, Carl Rossi is a cheap college wine I think it is still a step up above box wine, though. Maybe it is. I don't know. I don't drink wine. I can't tell you. With box wine, whenever we went on uh, floats on the river, as I said, I don't drink wine, but everyone would play slap the bag, which is essentially just a very dumb way to get drunk at the start of the float. Because what you do is you get an inner tube, you go to a place, well, you go to a place, you pay like 10 bucks, 20 bucks, whatever, 
and they drive you like down the road and they drop you off and then you float down the river back to basically where they took you from. And it's like, they don't like, they literally will have, you can rent a cooler tube where it's a tube that is the shape of a cooler and it has straps. So you can literally tie the, you can have your cooler floating with you. So yeah, anyways. So what we, so we would always, so someone would always bring a box of wine. You take off the box and you have the, the bag, the bladder. And you'd literally pass it around at the start of the float and people would, you know, you'd chug it and people would count. And when you're done chugging, you close the tab, you slap the bag and you pass it on. I was the only relative coherent person after that float. <laughs> I, and this is, this is, mind you, in the middle of BFE, Michigan. We're in, like, we're two, three hours north of Metro Detroit area. I'm on this river in the middle of nowhere, and I shit you not, a dude who was in architecture school with me, we floated right by him. And I was like, Freddy? He ended up having a bunch of vodka, so we all stopped and had shots with him. That was the most wild thing ever. Literally, like... In the middle of nowhere, Michigan, I run into some dude that I go to school with in Detroit. On this, it was just wild. It was absolutely wild. What's up, Devastated? I told the wife that there's certain, a couple of drinks, so I'm um, drinking these. Be drinking tall boys, yeah, yeah. Among us lushes, the debate between Rossi, Jug, and Franzia box has, will never be resolved. <laughs> oh man, yeah. That is actually, that is, that is one of my favorite things is to float the river on a tube. That's why this past summer I was, I went kayaking as much as I could. Uh, Devastated, thank you for the tier one for 20 months. Appreciate the continued support. We'll resend your alert when we get out of game. Chat, let's focus in. I know you have all been distracted. I've been perfectly not distracted. Curse Bullet, Bless Shield, that's a lot of damage into Genji. He does go down to Johanna. Meanwhile, Dino is currently 1v3-ing onto Nano as the bunker is activated by Blaze. Malthiel gets inside, tries to drop the, the uh, Dino health down. Last Rites is going to be thrown on a Masquerade, but the healing from Death Knight is enough to deny Last Rites stackage or kill. Last Rites do, does have two stacks currently, so that's 10 seconds off of the 70 second timer. Now I want a beer. Yeah, honestly, a beer sounds pretty good right now. It's 10.30 in the morning, but technically this is later in the day for me because it's not like I'm going to be staying up too late either way. Maybe we'll, get a, maybe we'll get a beer after this series. I am getting low on tea. Give me beer or gin. I've never developed the wine desire. <laughs> I mean, hots is important. Yes, it is. Uh, with my acid reflux and stuff, I've just never, I've never tried wine. Just because I assume it's just going to make my stomach hurt. Gin's the only liquor I really do anymore. Once in a blue moon, I'll have a screwdriver, which is orange juice and vodka. Uh, but that is because my parents left Grey Goose Vodka here, so that's kind of nice vodka for, for a screwdriver, so. Once every few months, like, they'll be like, I'll have, like, a Monday day off where there's nothing to do, and I'm like, I'm gonna have a screwdriver with my breakfast. But typically, it's just gin and soda. Tonic water has too much sugar in it. Jet Propulsion onto Dino. Sav uh, excuse me, an Emerald applied to him as well. Healing Reduction by 75% for I think it's four seconds. It's kind of, or maybe it's three. Four seconds, I, I know it's like a ridiculous amount of time for 75% healing reduction. First bullet from Greyman going out. They get made the connection onto Genji. Dino looking to jump in with a swap. We've got Fallen Shamans crashing or clashing in top lane. Line from Artanis, leap in from Sonya. Self cleanse as well, denies that. Last rites onto Sonya, does get the kill. Stay well and listen. Activated by Hunter Orc as Dino now trying to back away. Jet Propulsion from Blaze avoided by a dash and then a late swap. Dino's in a better position, but Hunter Orc, is there a bonk to take him down? 
Safety and numbers from Deckard Kane as Greyman goes to top. Sven's going to hearth out for full mana, but this Punisher going in through bottom lane. Vinland Raider is pretty happy about that double kill achieved and this objective. Beer and orange juice in the morning. Wait, beer in orange juice or like together? What, what do you mean? Mimosa? Isn't it mimosa champagne and orange juice? I can't do champagne either. I don't know what it is. Champagne's just gross to me. Whenever I go to a wedding, I always give my champagne to someone else and I try and fill it or at least get a beer. <laughs> like there's always something with champagne at a wedding and I'm like, can I just get like a beer instead or like fill this with beer? Kind of the same color. Beer and orange juice. I remember, um, I remember my buddy when we were younger, my, my buddy's older brother, uh, like his parents were out of town. So his older brother was quote unquote babysitting. We all know what that means. The older brother was half present and we gave him $20 for, for $10 worth of beer. All right. We gave him $30 for $20 worth of beer. But I remember we bought, uh, I remember we bought Killian's. I remember we bought Killian's for some weird reason. And um, he put like 50% Killian's or like 75% Killian's into a glass. And then the other like the other 25% was like orange juice. And he was talking about like how this is like a classy thing to do. And I was like, that just sounds gross to me. <laughs> yeah, Blue Moon with orange juice could go well. I would agree. Probably Oberon would go well with orange juice. I use Miller highlights for the champagne of beers. It is the champagne of beers. Or so they say. It's a man Mosa. Ugh! come on, devastated. Come on. Oh, this is, this is manly. I also, I also put wood shavings into my man Mosa. I put wood shavings and I also put a drop of, uh... Sorry, I'm trying to think of, uh, of leather, of leather smell. So, so that way my breath smells of leather. It's like every, that's like every, like, dude's shopping thing. It's like leather and some sort of, like, smokiness. Stay a while and listen. Leap of Faith is going to be the answer to that one. Uh, what's the Anduin Leap Charges like? Okay, so no Leap Charges available. Does have the Glyph of Faith, but 60-some seconds on that. Liquid smoke and everything, yeah. I don't make the rules, Baha. No, you're not so... That's all right. I'm just judging. <laughs> Another High Life in a bottle on a warm summer day. That is, that is actually pretty good. I'm not going to lie. Miller High Life, though, for me, is a, is a little, like, on the sweet side. I don't know why, but it has, like, a little sweet flavor to me. I only stir my man Mosa with raw bacon. <laughs> so, we're 20 talents here on both sides. I'm completely off topic. Toothpaste, liquid smoke. Shampoo, liquid smoke. Deodorant, you better believe, liquid smoke. Nah, the deodorant would be like a uh, leap, leap in right there with a light bomb as well. Hammer's the one to go down, but a jet propulsion from Blaze is the answer. Hazuabs will not fall to the last rights, but it is going to be Genji coming in with a swift strike. They do trade Sergeant Hammer for this Sonya as the Blaze activated bunker will expire here. Blade Dash from Artanis gets the swap onto Deckard Kane. He's going to self cast a scroll of ceiling. Genji trying to get away, will be able to do so. Malfeo buys back in. He cannot die for the next three minutes, otherwise he's got an 80 second death timer. And unfortunately, I think he should have just eaten that death timer and saved the buyback. But anyways, the deodorant will smell like um, sandalwood. Sandalwood's always in there as well. Anyone tried Danny Trejo's uh, non-alcoholic tequila? I have not. I'm not a tequila guy personally. I have been to a Trejo's taco, and that place was amazing. Oh, my God. 
I went to I went to uh, the the Danny Trejo uh, taco place in somewhere in Southern California. I forget like L.A. area. I think it was. Oh, dude, that was that was amazing. Those tacos were fantastic. Sandalwood sounds like something ladies wear. No, if it was, oh, I need work boot. I need work boot wood. Uh, that, that sounds like it. That's that sounds like uh, that sounds like a pill you take right before fun times. <laughs> if it was for women, it'd be thong wood. <laughs> I'm done. Jet propulsion from Blaze to start out this engagement. The camp is going to be still picked up by the members of Bratwurst and Bathrobe, or Bathrobe and blah, blah, blah. Bathrobe and Bratwurst. Yeah, that is, that is like one taco chain that I would definitely recommend if you have an opportunity to do it. That and Taco Bell Cantina, but I've never been to a Taco Bell Cantina. That's on, that's on the, that's on the, that's on the bucket list. Sorry, just giggling at, at reading back Twitch chat. All right, 21 minutes in. It seems like Bathrobe and Bratwurst are gonna be pushing to win. Swap for Martanis. There's gonna be a stay wall unless an interrupted. Blade dash with the light bomb. Leap in from Sonya. Another blade dash to attempt to get a kill, but it's, a, what? Ancient blessings activated. And Sonya, Artanis go down. The keep will be lost, but will Masquerade also be taken down? Leap of Faith to save. Checking Leap of Faith charges. Next one's up in 50 seconds. Why not Uggs would? No real man would wear Uggs. I actually, I personally think those are the ugliest boots on earth. I, I, I never, I never understood the appeal of Ugg boots. Maybe they're super warm and comfy, but they are so god dang ugly to me. <laughs> I guess it's I guess it's a fashion statement thing. When I was in middle school, one of the like one of the most popular things that that people would have is those uh, North Face fleece jackets. Like North Face fleece jacket and Birkenstocks was like that was like the that was like the fit when I was in middle school. You wear Uggs, they're comfy. I just think they're so ugly personally, but hey, you know, it's almost like these things are um, subjective. But I like there were so many kids who were like judgmental, like, oh, you don't have the North Face jacket. It's like, no, dude, I got my snowboard jacket. Because snowboarding's cool. Oh, well, I can't wear my spider jacket to school. I don't want my spider jacket to get dirty. <laughs> I don't want my outdoors jacket to get dirty. Spider, for those of you who don't know, is a very popular brand that's associated with, like, very bougie ski people. Like, people who buy spider stuff, like, they have all the nice best equipment. They go and do, like, two or three runs, and they're like... Yeah, it's not as good as, uh, you know, in, in the Alps or something stupid. Light bomb from Anduin. That gets a double stun as the members of Vinland Raiders were attempting. That is a full HP last rights. I don't know where that was going, honestly. Blaze goes down. Sven. Yeah, yeah. This, this was a... I mean, Sven, just get the auto on the keep. Come on, man. You can do it. For 230 HP, you'll be fine. Remind yourself that overconfidence is a slow and insidious killer. 246 HP remains. Top lane fort did go down during all of that. Malthiel buys back in. Your cats is make your cast is making one of our four cats day. He's obsessed with watching hots. Oh, well, Yanthor, I'm glad to uh, glad to provide some entertainment for your cat. Uh, please remind your cat that if they have Amazon Prime, they've got Prime Gaming. And if your cat has Prime Gaming, they've got one free sub here at twitch.tv slash Jahava Gaming. Get themselves some ad-free viewing, some amazing emotes. 
Well, a hard fought game. A stay while and listen only delays out the inevitable. But map number three goes over the side of Bathrobe and Bratwurst. GG, well played. What's up, Lazy Hydra? Good to see you, bud. That's middle school, everybody. Don't wear this niche thing. What are you doing with your life? Yeah. I mean, I, I literally, I, I saw on Reddit that, like, some kid was bullied because he didn't have the, 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 the type of thermos cup thingy that all the other kids had. My neighbor's kid, so so I have one of those, um, I have, what are these things called again? I have a um, hydro flask. And when I first bought this a couple years ago, I was out on a boat with some neighbors and my neighbor's kid was like, oh my God, Chris, you are such a visco girl. V Vasco, visco, I don't know. It's like the modern day term for, for whatever it is. And I was like, what do you mean? He's like, all the visco girls, she was like, all the visco girls have hydro flasks. And I was like, okay, yeah. And then I love, her dad just goes, yeah, but his job is to sit and talk to people all day. He needs a lot of water. 